Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another important lecture. Today we are studying the pathophysiology of retinopathy of prematurity and in simple words we are studying what causes ROP. The term ROP stands for retinopathy of prematurity. The term prematurity means that it tells us that this is a condition which is seen in extremely premature infants and retinopathy means it involves the uh, vessels of the retina in such a way that in this condition we see incomplete vascularization of the retina. The retinopathy of prematurity was initially described as retrolental fibroplasia and this was a term which was given by Terry in 1942 and it was uh, that time the leading cause of blindness in children. However, now it is famously called as the retinopathy of prematurity. In order to understand the pathophysiology of ROP, it is very important for us to understand the three epidemics that happened uh, of ROP. The first epidemic happened in 1940 to 1950s and this was actually in the industrialized countries which had good medical care, good neonatal care and it was primarily because of the unmonitored usage of supplemental oxygen in the newborn babies. Then they realized that this was the problem and there was regulation and monitoring of the high oxygen uh, supplementation at the time of birth and uh, when this happened ROP virtually disappeared at that time but again due to the recent advances and more advances in the neonatal care a new problem again appeared in 1970 and this problem was that now more and more babies were actually uh, being born earlier there were more um, uh, premature babies who were actually surviving at the earlier gestational ages and they had lower birth weights so again because of these two risk factors that is more premature infants and more uh, babies with low birth weight we had second epidemic seen in the same industrialized countries in 1970 then after that the third epidemic actually happened in 1990 and this began in the low and the middle income countries these countries when they caught up pace in the advances in the medical field and in the neonatal care now it was seen that even these countries were having various level varying level of neonatal care with the usage of oxygen and again rop appeared in these countries as the third epidemic it was seen, however, that ROP in these countries was also seen in the larger babies, in the older infants who were actually exposed to unregulated oxygen, similar to what was seen in the US in the first epidemic. Now, before we jump to the pathophysiology, it is uh, important to understand how actually the retinal vasculature develops. We know that the vascular uh, layers of the eyeball are the choroid and the retina. The choroid basically starts developing at sixth week of gestation and is completed by 21st to 22nd week of uh, gestation. Whereas the retina, if you can see, the retina starts developing at 16 weeks. I'm not talking about the retina, it is a retina vasculature okay the retinal vessels the veins and the arteries uh, they start developing at 16th week and they start developing from the disc and then they start uh, to develop towards the periphery they develop in such a way that the nasal uh, vasculature develops much earlier than the temporal vasculature so that the vasculature up to the nasal aura is completed by 32 to 36th week of gestation whereas the vessels reach the temporal aura after term about 40 weeks so this diagram is showing you that it is starting at the disc at 16 weeks and reaching the nasal aura by 32 weeks and the temporal aura by 40 weeks so what are the risk factors for development of retinopathy of prematurity the various risk factors are low birth weight which is very important risk factor young gestational age or premature babies babies who have received high unregulated oxygen at the time of birth with sometimes even fluctuations in oxygen that means the baby was sometime put on oxygen then was taken off weaned off and then again was started on oxygen then poor postnatal growth failure to thrive other risk factors for development of retinopathy of prematurity will be intra, uh, ventricular hemorrhages, babies who develop sepsis after birth, infections, use of steroids, who have lung diseases, and even multiple pregnancy twin deliveries, they are at greater risk of developing retinopathy of prematurity.
Now let us understand exactly what is happening in the retina in babies who are developing retinopathy of prematurity. To understand that you should understand two main terms what is vasculogenesis versus what is angiogenesis. The term vasculogenesis basically means de novo formation of the vessels from precursor endothelial cells. Okay, and um, it occurs before or at about 14 to 16 weeks of gestation and the vascularization of the posterior uh, pole through 22 weeks of gestation. So what I mean to say is that it starts at 14 to 16 weeks and this vasculogenesis is completed by 22nd week of gestation and from there on the angiogenesis process takes over right so the development of the vessel the new development of the vessel the de novo formation of the vessel from the precursor endothelial cell is called vasculogenesis and after that those dev already developed vascular channels will start uh, branching further budding further from the existing vessels and that is called angiogenesis so let me explain this to you with a diagram in the first picture, you can see that we have these various endothelial progenitor cells and these cells are now starting to fuse together and form a lumen uh, later on and they form a de novo new vessel, right? So this is called vasculogenesis. Now, we cannot just have a single vessel supplying the entire retina and therefore we need branches out of that vessel. So you can see in the second picture that new vessel has started to develop some sort of sprouting and that sprouting will form new vessels from the existing vessel and this is called the angiogenesis. Now, in case of premature infants or in case of babies, for example, what happens is that there are two main factors which are responsible for the development of vessels. And this is uh, these factors are the insulin like growth factor one and the vascular endothelial growth factor. In retinopathy of prematurity, the uh, babies when they are born premature, this fa these factors are not uh, present up to their maximum um, potential and this stops the normal process of retinal vascularization apart from that other factors like the injury which is induced by oxygen also halts the initial normal vascular development in these babies now let us try to understand how oxygen causes damage in this premature vessels so let's try to understand that using this uh, flow chart. So what happens in premature babies is that most of them are actually admitted in the hospital and they are on the ventilation and therefore they are under the supply of excessive oxygen. So what happens is because of that oxygen, there will be a hyperoxic environment and the retinal vessels are actually exposed to that hyperoxic environment. Usually for the development of the normal retinal vasculature, the insulin line growth factor and the vascular endothelial growth factor are actually required. However, in this environment, in this hyperoxic environment of the ventilator usually where the kid is exposed or to the oxygen uh, to which the kid is exposed to, what happens is that it sends a wrong signal to the retina as if the oxygen supply to it is sufficient. Therefore, because of that, what happens is the insulin-like growth factor 1 and vascular endothelial growth factor, their levels are actually down-regulated. Because of the down-regulation of these important two factors, there will be slowdown of the retinal vasculature development. And now, because the retinal vasculature development has slowed down, it will result in certain parts of the retina to be a vascular. To, be, to remain a vascular or we can say that there will be incomplete vascularization of the retina. Now we know that the preterm baby uh, they cannot be on oxygen forever. Once they are weaned off of the oxygen what happens is that now the retina will suffer from lap, lack of oxygen and this is referred to as a hypoxic condition. Now you might ask that why is hypoxia so dangerous? Hypoxia or decreased oxygen supply to the retina is also dangerous. This hypoxic environment is dangerous because now what will happen is now again the VEGF and the insulin-like growth factor 1 will start to increase and they will now try to vascularize the retina because they have understood that there is a hypoxic environment and we need to have more amount of blood vessels so that they can carry more amount of oxygenated blood and supply it to the retina to overcome this hypoxic environment so in a way it's a good thing because now the vascularization of the retina will start um, will start and there will be complete a completion of the vascularization of the retina 
but the problem is that the problem is these new vessels are not uh, like the normal vessels and they have a lot of uh, problems which are associated with these new vessels and this neovascularization is the heart of the pathological changes which occur in retina in ROP. So that is how oxygen plays a very important role in retinopathy of prematurity pathophysiology. Now, this can be actually explained using uh, this diagram. So, you can see that in the first picture, this is in the uterus uh, of uh, in the uterus of a mother you can see in uterus a normal vessel growth is occurring because we have a good supply of insulin like growth factor one and vascular endothelial growth factor the insulin like growth factor is represented in yellow color and the vascular endothelial growth factor is represented in the red color you can see that the vitreous is full of this yellow and red color and the vessels are also happily developing however when the baby is uh, uh, born prematurely now suddenly there will be decrease in the supply of this insulin like growth factor one and vascular endothelial growth factor one and now the vessels will stop developing right so at the same time if the baby is actually exposed to incremental level of oxygen or unregulated levels of oxygen what will happen whatever vessels are actually developing they will also stop developing moreover because the child is premature already the igf and vegf levels are low and because of the oxygen exposure again the uh, the levels of these factors will go down further and you will see that the vessel growth will totally stop now, however, as the retina starts developing, the child is weaned off the oxygen. Now, a state of hypoxia will develop. Now, in this state, the factors will start rising. However, the IGF will rise very slowly compared to the vascular endothelial growth factor. The vascular endothelial growth factor is the one which is responsible for new vessel development. So, you can see that again, the new vessels will start developing, but these vessels will not be as uh, mature as the normal vessel which would have developed uh, if the child would not have had uh, this retinopathy of prematurity so these new vessels will start developing so there will be definitely the uh, completion of the vascularization of the retina but apart from that there will also be certain proliferative changes certain uh, fibrosing changes in the retina which will lead to various problems associated with the retinopathy of prematurity you might ask what are these problems so new vessels they they are they have very weak walls so they can always bleed so they can vitreous hemorrhage and these new vessels can cause traction on the retina so you can see this tractional retinal detachment so a lot of things which are associated in this condition which i'll be talking about in the signs of retinopathy of prematurity so this is how the new vessels are going to develop at the junction of the vascular and urbascular retina